This is going to be just a quick video that covers the boundary tab in the advanced 3D machining parameters. I was doing a webcast uh, the other day and someone typed in a question about covering the boundary tab. I didn't have time to do it then, so I figured I'd make a journeyman video on it. So I have an advanced 3D tool path here. You can see that I've got an eighth inch tool up here. I'm just going to do a lace cut. That boundary tab works with other tool paths. Um, in advanced 3d but it shows the best with lace cut so i'm just going to stick with lace cut for now i made this step over 20 thousandths just so we could be able to see it a little bit better so it's not just a big red blob on your screen so let's go ahead and click over to boundary so if we look here we see that this tab is actually broken up into three sections you know boundary style boundary mode and then down here is stock management um, these all kind of work together to define the outer perimeter of the toolpath. So boundary style, we can see here there's, you know, part bounding box, stock bounding box, silhouette, shallow area, cutter contact area, and selected curves. I don't have a solid right now that's defined as stock, so it's grayed out. I also don't have any solid selected, so there's no cutter contact areas. And that's also for individual surfaces, not complete solids. I'll show you that in a second, and then I and selected curves. So we're going to say bounding box. Down here for stock type, we have you know none, so it's not going to be bound by the stock type. The workpiece default, which generally speaking is is usually the stock that's defined in your um, document dialog, but it's the default X, Y, and Z for the workpiece default. And then part with offset. I did another journeyman video on that. You can research it. What it does is it actually just takes the the solid and offsets it out to create a, st uh, a stock. And then last but not least is solid. Again, I'm gonna show you that in a second. All right, so boundary mode, on to or past. On will have the tool move into the boundary until the center of the tool is on that boundary. Two, the tool will go up to that boundary but not past it. Past, it will, the tool will go to the boundary and then overshoot the boundary, the diameter of the tool. Okay, and we'll see that here in a second. So let's just, this is the default, what's up here right now. So let's go ahead and just click our solid and do it, and I'll show you what we get. There we go. So it's bound by the part bounding box. We can see that it's stopping here. And the reason it's not cutting here is because contact area only. So what it does is it, it's, it's constraining that tool path um, to only parts where the tool is actually touching the part. So let's go ahead and just click that off and I'll show you what that does. There we go. So you can see that it goes all the way to the edge until the center is on, the center of the tool is on that bounding box. Okay. One thing that you'll see when you do this is, see how these are straight here? Sometimes you'll see curved lines and that's over here in my options. If you click on smooth and go ahead and redo it, what this does is this put arcs, puts arcs at the ends of those tool paths. So your, your machine's not, you know, herky jerky going from X to Y, X to Y really fast. There you go. And it kind of rounds out those, uh, those passes, make it a little bit easier on your uh, ways. There we go. All right. So let's go back to our boundary. So we can see that that was, you know, part bounding box and on, and then that little curve is to lessen the, the uh, change in position or change in direction. All right. So let's talk about that solids real quick. So I have a solid that I built here. It's just a, a big disc. You can see that that's just that. So I'm going to right mouse button click on it in the body bag and change that body type to stock. Now, when you see when I do that, automatically my stock type down here turns a solid and the rest of these are grayed out. I have a solid that's defined as stock. You go ahead and pick that. And now you can say stock bounding box. So let's go ahead and redo that one. There we go. So you can see that if I was to draw a box around that um, stock, that's what I would get. You rotate that a little bit. Let's put that in isometric so we can see it. Kind of lays it down onto that tool path. All right. So let's do contact areas only. And I think by this time you'll know what that does is it'll only machine that part within that boundary. So let's go look at the top view of this. There we go. So another question I got during the webcast was why didn't it cut the corners? And I think they were referring to these corners here. And that's because I had on my part bounding box. So that tool is not going to go past. 
So if you if you run into a problem with that where you can't get the tool to go past, um, just make a bigger piece of stock. Or what we can do, let me turn on geometry here. Here's that circle that I used for that stock. So if I select the solid and that circle, actually, let's do this. I'm going to change this back to my part. And you can see as soon as I click a solid and a piece of geometry, or a, a curve, sorry, it says, okay, let's use that selected curve as a boundary. So let's go ahead and redo it, and I'll show you that. There we go. So that's basically the same thing. If we turn off contact areas, we can do it. So what this is going to do is this is going to allow you to um, extend out the tool path. Uh, without having to build a solid you can just build any kind of 2g geometry and then it will uh, it will use that to define the tool path all right so let's go ahead and click off of that so now I'm gonna go ahead and just turn on my surface selector so I'm gonna select a surface and I'm gonna come down here to cutter contact areas what this is gonna do is it's only going to machine the contact areas for a specific surface there we go so you can see that it actually binds the the tool path into that surface there we go so another thing that I have gotten a lot of questions about is the the shallow areas so let's go ahead I'm gonna turn back on my solids and I'm gonna to go to shallow areas now the shallow areas is directly tied into the surfaces tab with our normal vector range, which is zero to 90. If you were to run this shallow area when it's zero to 90, it will just machine the whole thing. It will say, okay, everything is within zero to 90. It's normal vector area. If we change this number, say to 30, and then click redo, Now you can see that it's only machining the flats of the part. See how it's not kind of coming down and connecting those over the whole thing? It's just um, going through and machining those flats on there. So let's go ahead and change that boundary. I don't want it to do out here. I don't want it to do in the middle, right? So let's just do contact areas only and hit redo. This is a good example of tweaking a tool path to make sure that uh, you don't get any extra tool movement. There we go. So if you want to just machine um, surfaces that are horizontal or near horizontal, uh, that shallow area, and then defining it again over here in the surfaces tab, your normal vector range. So one thing I wanted to cover was output calculated boundary. So let's go ahead and look at that and we'll actually use that calculated boundary with the steep shallow, or I'm sorry, the shallow area. So Let's go ahead and say put out calculated boundary. Let's go ahead and click this and hit redo. There we go. So we can see it actually shows me the boundaries of those flats and um, vertical walls. So it actually puts out the boundaries for the output boundaries. So that pretty much covers the boundary tab in advanced 3D machining. If you have any questions, about boundary tab or any other advanced 3d machining um, features please feel free call your local gibbs cam reseller or gibbs cam technical support